My toddler and I snuggled deeply into our down coats as we walked through a quiet neighborhood against the brisk wind. Thankfully, the snow warnings of the week before never emerged, but it was snippy outside. It wasn't long before we reached the community center and welcomed the warmth that greeted us as we pushed open the door. My toddler cheered that we had made it as I sniffed the delicious smells wafting up from the basement. I grabbed my little one's hand and we bounced down the long stairs into a big space filled with chairs and tables, a dusty piano, and a toy area for children. I looked around a corner to see a kitchen where an older black woman was standing. She turned and smiled at us. Are you here for me? she asked as she stirred something boiling in a huge pot on the stove. Actually, there were several pots steaming and rattling. My stomach growled. Yes, we are here for the community meal, I said. Well, welcome. Come in. Have a seat. Food will be served soon. I'm running a little behind. I took off me and my toddler's coats. He ran to the toy area, and I checked out the room. A couple of months ago, I noticed a post encouraging BIPOC, which stands for Black, Indigenous, and People of Color, to attend a free weekly meal. In my city, which is known for its hipster leanings of co-ops, community housing, and a gifting community, giving away gently used items, etc., Community meals are common, but this one appealed to me as it was specifically creating space for BIPOC community members. I thought it was fitting to attend on MLK Day, as Dr. King often spoke about creating beloved communities. Also, I find it problematic that Black folks are expected to engage in service charity acts on this day. As a people that were enslaved for 200 plus years for free labor, I think it's absurd we're expected to go out and plant trees, wash graffiti off walls, or pick up trash. MLK Day should be a day for black people to engage in self-care and celebrate our black icon. So, the community meal was a perfect way to not only engage in wellness, but honor the legacy of King. Other folks started to trickle in and we helped set up the tables and chairs. It wasn't long before the food was done and spread out buffet style. I grinned as I filled my plate with roasted carrots, fluffy rice and beans, and actually tasty tofu turkey. I grabbed some toasted bread and made a cup of orange zest tea. We chatted easily, but mostly just quietly ate our food in community. My toddler ran back and forth from the play area, refusing to eat the turkey, but nibbled a bit on the rice and beans. The dessert consisted of a tofu cheesecake. I'm not the biggest cheesecake fan to begin with, and having it made tofu style did not make it more appealing, but it didn't taste too bad. Soon, My toddler grew restless, so I cleaned up our plates. I bundled us back into our coats. On a corner table were boxes of fruits and veggies to take home, if needed. I declined, but I might grab a few items next time. We said our goodbyes to everyone. The older black woman told us to come back whenever we can. I said, of course. I plan to bring her a gift next time we go. I appreciate the work she and her organization is doing to host such a nice community meal. We went up the stairs and walked back outside. It had grown even colder. Gloves, mama, my toddler cried as I put his gloves on and stuck mine on as well. That was fun. What's next? My little one asked as we trudged down the street. Home, I said. He cheered. I hope you enjoyed this story of our community meal, 
and I hope it inspires you to create your own in your community. Before I go, I would like to leave you with the words of writer Bell Hooks. She states, Beloved community is formed not by the eradication of difference, but by its affirmation, by each of us claiming the identities and cultural legacies that shape who we are and how we live in the world. Thank you for listening, and I will see you at the next video.